It's the last week of March, so I got a few more seeds I want to plant. My parsnips finally came in, the parsnip seeds. But we got rocked by that freezing cold temperature that came through. That lasted for a good five, six days every night in the 20s. So I actually haven't checked my potatoes yet. We're going to do that together today. But today I'm going to be planting turnips and beets. I'm going to actually hold off on the parsnips for a little while, at least a couple of days. I think that cold temperature finally broke, but I want to make sure before I put the seeds into the ground out there that I'm just not going to be putting them out in frozen uh, weather because they're not going to grow anyway. So let's plant up the seeds. I hadn't planned on planting this month. I, I decided to plant some turnips because uh, I really do like turnips. <laughs> and... Uh, so I'm going to start them indoors, and as I've been doing all year long, so far, I've been pre-sprouting the seeds. And we seem to be doing pretty good here. These are the purple top variety. I'm going to be planting them in these uh, four-cell containers. So with these, I'll, as I did with uh, the peppers, I'm going to be putting two uh, seeds in each cell. I've got 50 plants to plant then because I have uh, 25 spaces. Got my handy tweezers. Probably a little late on moving these things out. Should have been done a little bit sooner. But with a gentle touch, because you really don't want to squeeze down on these stems because they are so delicate. We'll just push these into the holes. And then we'll cover them up. So just like that, we got them in. Now I'll push the dirt in around the root. Just so that there's contact with the soil around them. And I've got a little sifted compost here. And we'll just sprinkle it lightly over the top. And then we'll lightly water it. We'll be on to the, uh, the rest of them. Next thing will be to take a label and put it in. So I got a bunch more to do. And I'll be back when I'm done. So we've got 52 uh, turnips planted in this little container. And this is a project I'll be showing uh, in one of my upcoming videos. Uh, but right now, it's six four-cell containers that fit in here, plus a uh, single three-and-a-half-inch pot. So I've got four seeds in here, and then two seeds in each of the other cells, so 52 seeds. It's the purple top white globe turnip, and these will now be moved indoors under lights once they start uh, popping up. Eventually, we'll be moving them out into the greenhouse. Another vegetable I ha hadn't planned on planting, but I'm going to anyway, are beets. So I'll be pre-sprouting these as I've been doing so far this year with all my plants. And these are Detroit Red, Detroit Dark Red Morses strain. I'm not quite sure what that is. I've had plenty of Detroit Dark Reds before. Can't find any of my spray bottles at the moment. So I'll use one of my 
homemade spray bottles. And <laughs> just a water bottle with some holes drilled in the cap. Take that. And just fold that over, press it down, and water them in. Don't want to make them too wet so that they uh, get soggy in there. And now we'll put them into a, uh, a plastic baggie. So I got some bigger bags this time. These are gallon sized bags. All makes for a lot easier. And we'll put this on a on my heat mat in my grow room, give them some uh, warm temps, and uh, hopefully within a week they'll sprout. So these are the Detroit dark red beet seeds I had uh, pre-sprouted, and probably within three days or so, these guys were uh, growing. So it was a good batch of seeds. So we got some decent germination here. As you can see. And we're gonna take these seeds and we're gonna pop them into the four cell trays, just like we did with the turnips. So with these seeds, I'm actually only gonna put one in each cell, as opposed to the turnips where I put two in each cell. I just don't think I have enough seeds, but I think 25 uh, uh, beets for this planting and in a couple of weeks I can plant uh, more if I want I'll uh, I'm just gonna do one in each cell I'll just take it and we'll put it right in there and we'll put that to the side and we'll do the rest of them just like that. As you may know, beet seeds are actually a cluster of seeds, not a single seed. So you can get two, three, four uh, plants from a single seed. So I just wanted to show you that this one seed has two plants growing out of it. And uh, I'm gonna plant them both and then I'll just choose the strongest one when they sprout. But uh, I just want to show you the cluster seed in progress. So I haven't really touched the potatoes at all since I covered them up. So I have no idea what's in store underneath here. So I'm going to start here. Oh, looks like we lost some of our lettuce. Yeah. This isn't holding up too well here. This might be salvageable. This was the uh, prime head, prize head. I forget what the hell it's called now. Uh, the salad bowl mix, well, one did. This died out. Maybe get some growth out of that yet. <laughs> so we lost our lettuce here under the cold temps. Lost a lot of our potatoes back there, but as you can see, this one is growing anew. So we should, that's what I'm hoping, is all of these will restart. Well, actually, you know what? A lot of these might not restart. A lot of these were potatoes that the uh, 
uh, what do you call it? the stems had broken off and I just planted them in the ground. There was a couple that still had the potatoes on them. I planted, I think, just the potato after I'd knocked off uh, the, the shoot. So this could be something like that. This could still have the potato in the ground, but a lot of these others might not. It's these over here that were all planted normally, <laughs> normally for me. So it looks like we got a whole bunch survived. The tops still look good. I mean, there's a few back here that are looking a little ragged. But overall, I think we might have come through this for the most part. It could have been better, perhaps. But it might not be the worst. Okay, I removed the uh, cover. And it's not looking terrible, not looking great. Like I said, these back here are looking pretty ragged. But that one there, still looking green. I got some green ones here. And we got new growth coming out here. Even though these died back, we have new growth here. So, and then these over here. These didn't have much of a growth to begin with, but as you can see, some are starting to pop up now. So, as I said, I think we're gonna be able to salvage the potato crop. Well, I tell you, if uh, <laughs> I get any potatoes this year, the way I've been going so far, it'll be amazing. But it looks like we'll get a couple of potatoes anyway. I'm going to actually give all these plants a good deep watering. They haven't had one in about a week, even though the uh, ground looks pretty moist. They haven't had any additional water added in about a week since the uh, freeze started. Now, my lettuce over here... I forget what this is. <laughs> Can you tell me? <laughs> so we've lost some down here, but we had more up here, I think. Uh, this is the, oh, that's what it is. This is the black seeded Simpson. So seems like it's pretty cold hardy. <laughs> we did lose a few down here, but that's okay. So over here, as I was showing, we haven't had too much growth yet, although I see something popping up right down. Oh, <laughs> popping up right down here. These are actually asparagus plants. I cut down the, uh, what was supposed to be apricot trees, but turned out to be just wild cherry trees of some sort. And uh, I dug up all the roots. These are, these are the trees that were right next to the uh, a metal planter that I planted the sweet potatoes in last year that I got those sweet potatoes from. <laughs> so I'm going to be planting them in there again. And someone had suggested that maybe they weren't getting enough sunlight. So those trees are gone. And I had planted asparagus underneath them. So I'm going to be putting these asparagus plants into barrels. So I'm going to have one... Uh, barrel dedicated to uh, the asparagus plants. So I'm going to have two asparagus plants in there. And then one barrel to the horseradish, which hasn't seen any growth just yet. So not sure for what's going to happen with that. Maybe we're not planting horseradish this year. We'll have to see. These are my spearmint and peppermint plants here. And I made some really nice... Uh, peppermint jelly last year uh, from these, from mint jelly, I should say, because I mixed the two uh, together. And one was uh, with some red chili pepper flakes from a prior harvest a couple of years ago. That one was really good. But as you can see, we do still have this mouse issue here. I'm assuming is a mouse issue. This, uh, I forget, I think it's parsley. But something was digging in here and digging out all the dirt. So maybe it was just trying to get some uh, warmth during those cold temperatures. And this is my thyme plant. It's come back. It's uh, growing nicely now. So this is where we stand in the greenhouse right now. 
couple of lettuce plants survived. Looks like a good portion of the uh, potatoes survived too. And for those where the plants, uh, the stalks died back, we just might be getting more growth now. So they've definitely been set back, not the complete disaster I was anticipating. Well, we'll see at the end of the year, won't we? One thing I did notice <laughs> is that with these uh, sticks that I used to uh, prop them up, they're sprouting. <laughs> these are, uh, might have been the branches from the cherry tree, could have been from my pear tree or peaches. <laughs> but I could cut off, whoa, birds are dive bombing the greenhouse. <laughs> guess they don't like me talking. Uh, so I'd cut off some branches and because they were very straight, I used them and stuck them in the soil and they're actually sprouting. I wouldn't get anything out of them. Uh, I don't think they're gonna grow any roots out of them, but uh, it's just funny to see. So that's the potato harvest or harvest, that's the potato plants. So it seems like it's two steps forward, one step back, maybe one step forward, two steps back with the garden this year. Having <laughs> a real tough start this time. But if you want to see what we were doing in the garden last week, check out this video right here. And if you find these videos informative or helpful or <laughs> ridiculously funny of how I screw things up, consider checking out our new spread shop store. I'll have a link in the description below. We have all kinds of gardening merchandise uh, down there to check out. And then subscribe and hit that notification bell. And that way we'll be able to follow along on the progress on all of our vegetables as we try to grow a supermarket in our own backyard. Okay, thanks for watching.